Welcome to the introduction to the Avidyne's R9 desktop simulator. First of all, start by clicking the R9 simulator on the desktop. And an extremely important button to know in the beginning is this one that's on the simulator down here in the bottom left corner, um, the left arrow, which allows you to switch between the two instrument flight displays. Um, this is really important if you only have one computer to monitor and need to switch between the uh, right IFD here and the left IFD. Begin by checking the data on the right IFD if it is correct. If it is correct, go ahead and hit proceed. Information comes up that is normal for the sim that some information is unavailable. Confirm that. Next we'll go ahead and put in our initial fuel. The main knob, the, the big side, turns the 10, minus 10, minus 1, plus 1, and plus 10. Since we want to add to the tabs, we'll go ahead and hit the tabs button and then add 10 gallons and then select done. If you make a mistake you can go ahead and ch change the display back to the fuel again by clicking and then you can go ahead and re-enter uh, your fuel. So if you actually wanted uh, full fuel you could click that and done and then just change your display back to the um, EGT and CHD. Next we'll learn about the five page function keys along the bottom of the uh, integrated flight display puzzle. Um, currently we are on the uh, system page that is lit up in green. Um, on the system um, function page there is five tabs. We are currently on the uh, engine tab. Um, showing this. To switch from the engine tab to the alert tab, we go ahead and select the right side of the system um, function key and we change to the alerts. Uh, if we select it again, we'll go to audio and likewise. And if we want to go back, we hit the left side of the key, key, back to alerts and back to the engine tab. To change to another function, we simply just uh, select that key. And now we change to the checklist function. On the checklist function, you can see there's also different tabs across the bottom here for the different checklist. If we wanted to select the before taxiing and taxiing checklist, we could go ahead and turn the knob, the large knob, the outside one here, down until we highlighted the before taxiing and taxiing checklist. And then we can check the line select key here to show. And that brings up our before taxiing and taxi checklist. And then as we do each item, we can go ahead and check it. Flaps, radios, and avionics are set. Cabin heat and defrost set and fuel selectors switched. To check out different checklists we can use the tab and tab along. We go to the normal flight. If we wanted the climb checklist to be ready we could go ahead and hit show so it'd be ready when we uh, needed it. And then other tabs are different um, information about the airplane and emergency checklist. Okay, if we want to look at the FMS um, function, we can go ahead and select that one. Now, the airplane knows where we're at, but the simulator uh, doesn't know where we're at, so we have to input that information. So let's go ahead and insert an origin. So we'll go ahead and hit enter. And then we can go ahead and put in our origin. You can use the keyboard. So I'll go ahead and type uh, um, Kilo Bravo Tango Lima for uh, Battle Creek. And go ahead and hit enter. Okay, now that we have Battle Creek as our origin, we can also insert a destination. Let's go ahead and hit insert again. And um, we can go ahead and let's go to Kalamazoo. So Kilo. 
Alpha, Zulu, Asker. And we can go ahead and hit Enter. And now we're going direct to Kalamazoo. Okay, let's go ahead and switch back to the system page so we can monitor the engine. At certain times, certain cautions, alerts, or warnings will show up. Right here we have a yellow caution and the line select key goes with that one. You can say it's green. You can see up here there's nothing to go with that one. There's no green up here on this one. So the green one. Now the ends make a difference. So acknowledge will be the left side and show here will be the right side. So let's go ahead and I just want to uh, um, acknowledge that. So I'll hit the left side and that's acknowledged. And then I could also change my display here by selecting different sides. Okay, over here on the um, left side we have an advisory um, for Class D airspace ahead of us. Uh, we can go ahead and acknowledge that. And now let's go ahead and uh, switch to the other, the left IFD. So let's click on the arrow. On the um, left IFD, or some guys cause the primary flight display, we have up here in the right corner, you can set in the altimeter, and the altimeter is right here. Right now it's at 29.92, and we can change that by clicking on one side. Uh, it goes down if we click on that side. It goes up if we click on the other side. And just like in the airplane, if we push the push it with the click there, it goes back to standard 2992. The left IFD also has line select keys. You can see this one's uh, not lit up, so it has no function. But this one is green and has a function. And since there's no arrows on either end of the box here, we can go ahead and hit the line select key anywhere and go ahead and start the timer. So you can see now that the uh, timer is going and that there's now arrows at the end, so the different ends of the line select key here will do different things. So if I hit the left side, it'll go ahead and stop it. So there it stopped. And then if I hit the right side here, it'll go ahead and reset it. Um, all these other ones also have functions. If I want to set a vertical speed, I could go ahead and tap that one. It comes highlighted now. And now the knob works, and if I want to go down uh, 100 feet per minute, I can put that in. Or if I want to just uh, 50 more, I can do the inner knob. Or f uh, 50 up, I can go this way. Or increments of 100 up, I can uh, go this way and be climbing at 100 feet per minute, um, my climb rate. Um, these other functions, we'll go ahead and see those uh, work on the keypad in a future video. The left IFD also has function keys that can bring up the checklist and go through the different pages, systems, maps, the FMS, and the PFD. And the PFD, you can also tab across to change the page there. So we can change to nav display. The line select keys on the left side deal with navigation. Um, you can uh, disarm the intercept. You can turn on the bearing pointer, and you can also change between the FMS GPS to the NAV1 or NAV2. These will be covered more in depth in another video. The bright and dim switch does not work on the simulator, but does brighten and dim it in the actual airplane. The R9 desktop simulator is available from the Avidyne website or at the Western Michigan College of Aviation Computer Lab.